power picks. I was about to say Rel, you have Sejuani, you have Rakan, yep. you kind of have your, your dealer's choice of the kind of flex picks. And so this forces now NRG to kind of pick up the Rakan, unless you want to hand over Zaya Rakan. Uh, I kind of like this combination right now. Renekton seems really strong here with the, I guess Jax is still up and available, but Rumble being banned usually allows that to be a pick and both these teams will go for an early priority on Renekton. So maybe they're just leaving it up because, I mean, they're both comfortable with Jax, so it's fair. Uh, usually, I would say first picking a champion that you play, but the opponent doesn't, isn't that lucrative. Mm. In this case, I think they're happier responding, so I'm, I'm hoping they'll just counter pick AD here. If they don't counter pick AD, I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose of first picking Ivern, because you could have just grabbed it on 2 3. C9 is never going to slam it 1 2 like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are the team with the high Ivern priority, they are not. So, first picking Ivern here, I think, was a bit of a jumping, like jumping the gun type of situation where now it's like you gave over a power pick in the Zaya to Berserker for a power pick that's only really a power pick for you, mm. right? So even though you get Renekton and Rokan, which are great champions, uh, the order in which you acquired them um, doesn't really make sense to me because I would have preferred to see, uh, for example, the Zaya first pick. Yeah. Because uh, I do think Zaya is fantastic into Renekton. So if you're going to be playing a game where you're, you're running this matchup back, uh, I think you could squeeze out a little bit more uh, going four or five with your top lane in this game and then uh, Creating a situation where you're playing Ivern with a stronger top laner is really oppressive for, for <laughs> as a top laner. Like, yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Uh, Jet, I'm sure, is at home watching, <laughs> sipping some tea right now. Thank yes. you very much. I hope so. Uh, this does lead to a rematch from the Game 1's draft, where it's mm -hmm. the Jax again for Fudge, and he definitely came out ahead there. And it does feel like the top side has been an issue where they're playing into the, the Renekton, you know, with the Orn, doesn't go well. You're playing into the Jax with the Renekton, doesn't go well. I think that's where a lot of C9s early gold and plays are being made. So they not only need to figure out the matchups, but figure out a way for contracts that protect Doklo from getting first blood to begin. Like I said, um, I would have preferred to see more scaling. So I got playing the Jack side, like even Jack's blind, for example, I think is something I would have liked to see. I just want to see more scaling from NRG side because it doesn't seem like they can pick the winning lane and winning lanes and actively create a gold lead that will translate into something meaningful, right? Last game you saw it. Uh, they're playing against Sivir. Uh, we played Aphelios and the Kai'Sa, and they just outscaled us everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I also I'll buy a vial. <laughs> I'll buy a vial. <laughs> Ooh, Aphelios is a good ban. Um, just wanted to see what the AD carry pick is going to be for NRG. With usually you don't want to lose lose that to four or five, uh, knowing that Zai is the pick. Kai's has already been taken uh, as a ban in first phase. Now you've lost two bans on with Ezreal and Aphelios, so. Options are pretty limited. Uh, I actually think there's a really good option here. I think running off your comp here with Jay Ziggs is exactly what Aaron. Oh, you're yeah. a bad man. I was going to say oh, Zeri, you slap an Ivern shield on her. Oh, I would have been I a Varus enjoyer. Oh, please, no Varus. Uh, I, I think if you run off the comp with Jay, Jay Ziggs, it makes a ton of sense, especially if they're going to go an enchanter like Melio. Um, However, even if they don't, I think it, it really just plays into the weakness of Zaya, where you pick super high range champions. It's going to be really hard for her to hit anything. And Renekton can just play as a bodyguard together with Rakan. And when you're out range, it's not that easy to engage with Ivern at all. So I, I'd be a huge fan of that. Personally, not saying it's going to happen, but it's what LPL has been doing in Zaya, if I'm not mistaken. They, they, they like to draft Ziggs into that, and then they just play Jay Ziggs type of comps. Okay. I, I do like it because you would have a huge range advantage over what C9 has shown right now, and you can opt into it. They do have engage, so you would have to play it well, but it is short range. Well, of course. Yeah. In order to win a game of League of Legends competitively, yeah. one has to play well. C9 obviously. would argue otherwise. They did beat EG, and in their own words, say they did not play well. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I can respect that. Sever is going to be the option, so we're going to need, like, I'm hoping for a big control mage here, something that's really going to push NRG's damage pattern, yeah. like, into the Azir is still up. That's Talfox one of Talfox's best, Fox's best, best champ. Really, really we should slap Azir here Azir. every single time if we're going to pick Sivir. I don't think it should be a Sivir Jace. I <laughs> they got half of what, what you yeah. wanted. Not Never mind. Oh, Thank there you. we go. All right. Beautiful. Um, I think this makes sense. This is, like I mentioned, oh, a lot of scaling. Oh, no. Okay, so when I saw Faker pull this out, I was like, I do not want to see a return <laughs> to Corgi Azir. You guys are in the green room. And I was <laughs> ranting about this literally this morning. We have Corky into his ear. We got an action-packed game, guys, from <laughs> Cloud Nine's uh, 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 Corky. Azir, Sivir, Corky. Azir, We're Sivir. feasting tonight, boys. And oh. Ivern. <laughs> I definitely would have preferred to see the Ziggs Jace, but it might not be something they have prepared. Uh, on the other side, I think Sivir, Sivir, Azir is not bad here. I do think in terms of frontline, they're a little bit lacking unless Dokla can get ahead. I think in this game, it's going to be really important that uh, NRG's frontline will be able to survive the rel engage. Mm. That's a really big deal. 
uh, if Rel jumps in and Renekton manages to not just disappear, um, that's going to make a huge difference and buy time for that Sivir and Azir to ramp up their damage because they aren't champions that burst quickly. They actually stack up their damage with Conquer and Lethal Tempo. So it's really, really pivotal. All right, NRG is interesting corky packages to be exactly. worth the corky laning phases. We'll see what the package Respect. deliveries look like in this one, or if Energy's gonna have what it takes to utilize this Azir for Palafox, along with the Sivir of FBI. Contract's also getting his Ivern is a pretty big deal too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Energy have turbo late game comp and then a Renekton. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Ivern, Azir, Sivir, uh, Rakan, all really, really strong late game champions. Of course, there is some really good scaling on C9 side as well. Yep. Uh, but it's kind of more you know, in a different way. You know, they have a good poke with Corky. They have good side lane with Fudge. So it will be interesting to see, you know, if they can get ahead, if they can actually utilize that to kind of snowball the game. Uh, because if it goes slow, I do think Energy have really strong 5v5. Uh, the only problem may just be uh, if they're getting outranged. Because late game, yeah. You're going to have a lot of DPS from the Azir, from the Sivir, uh, but Corky can be problematic. Jack in the crowd there, watching the games, always around the studio when the team's playing. He wants to see him take this dub, earn that spot for the automatic trip to the finals next Sunday. Energy, of course, the thing is, if you lose to C9 here and you go to the lower, the lower match, you still have to play him again, even if you win that one. So I think you definitely don't want to just drop this 3-0. Yeah. When we were uh, watching the draft in here earlier, DeMonte actually walked by the caster area and yelled at me, it's already done, bro. Reverse sweep. We already so won. There's, yeah, we already won. So there's some confidence, at least there, to bring it back and make it go the distance. But energy definitely has a long road ahead of them. Tri-lane view, as you can see, contracts walking through mid lane behind the turrets. Nobody from C9 is going to see what he's doing, but they should have some idea just based on how these early Ivern paths work as bot side nobody's hit level two just yet but it is berserker and zven with full control over the wave in the push yep absolutely uh, they did have a ward on his red so they saw him walk over and smite that he just channeled on all his blue side camps then goes down smites the red goes back up gonna be able to take all those camps and we'll see where he wants to go from there if he wants to put on any sort of early pressure nice little interaction there you can cue the blue then take the blast cone channel on, on the wolves then take the cue onto the blue and channel there it's kind of one of those cool little optimizations i remember kobe was telling me though that he found it's, out it's not actually faster that it's actually slower he found out it's slower <laughs> and he was so sad because he's like oh like it just shows that i know ivory <laughs> it looks so cool but it just doesn't get it done it looks cool but it's bad yeah contracts comes up there just to give a little bit of relief for Dokla in the Renekton versus Jax matchup. We talked a little bit about it back in game one, how Jax and the way that Counter-Strike interacts He's with the wave, stay. just allowing you to force it up, you can take control early versus Renekton, but with Contracts making another visit, they're going to look for this. They force the flash at least, so Fudge getting away with that one. Meanwhile, back in bottom lane, it's Ignar. 100 HP, he tried to flash, but it won't matter. Berserker's got him back up in the top lane. It's a 2v2 at the same time. Blabber's joined the party. Fudge is low, but he's got the counter strike ready to turn it around. Contracts locks him down with a root collar, and now they need just a little bit more damage to finish him off. Doko goes for the flash, call the Meek, and that's going to be a kill back over to Energy. Nicely done by Energy, winning that skirmish on the top side. The counter strike came back up for Fudge, so he went in for Contracts, but Contracts still had his flash so he's able to flash away then land that root collar onto him giving Doka that free dash back in onto the jacks so at the very least they went out on that top side because having that first blood go this early to berserker is really problematic you can see it one more time i assume it's just hook from the brush here zven does get that earlier level three and they're trying to fight for level three so it's level three to level two yes he levels up but he's already losing about 80 percent of his health there just not respecting the engage. You can see the frustration yeah. on his face. Knows that's not a death he wants to be having, especially this early on. And then back towards that top side. Again, it was the earlier flash. Forced out of fudge by the repeat gank tier from Contracts. Blabber comes back up to cover. As Fudge tries to re-engage, though, it's an easy flash away from Contracts. And then with no flash on Fudge, the root caller means his death. They can chase him down. So well played there by Energy getting one on that top side and the kill going to Dokla is actually really, really impactful because these kind of matchups, you know, especially Jace, or Jax versus Renekton, you do not want to fall behind as Renekton because nope. you are going to get outscaled eventually anyway. You need to kind of stay ahead of the pace of the, of the Jax to really be impactful back here in bottom lane. This is where they got to make sure they don't start bleeding. Losing in the 2v2 like that, giving away that kill that generally you would think they would 
be able to escape. It's going to be rough for energy, so they'll have to keep that farm going again. You've got your 500 CS, Sivir win condition. You know you've got this comp that's going to scale super hard, mm -hmm. and you've got the kill on the one part of the comp that's drafted for the early stability. So just keep it going, play it safe, let yourself scale up. And we'll see if they can actually utilize that Renekton to get some prior on top side, take some early heralds, you know, utilize that to start to snowball the game, you know, drop heralds mid, inject gold into these carries that really, really want to scale. Um, I do think that's an important part of it. This ward has been shut off, but it's actually just going to be cleared out there by Blabber. So they have full knowledge of where Blabber is on the map. So we'll see if Ivern is actually going to move up towards topside to cover. I definitely think he should. If either of these top laners die without TP, it is so much more devastating than that first death. The second one is always way more risky. But you can see Fudge fully backing off on the minimap now because Blabber is heading down towards mid. And Doklu just hit six, so there potentially could be some threat of a dive, but unless Fudge wastes Counter-Strike, I don't think there's any realistic chance he can make it happen. Back in mid, Blabber looking for the Shattering Strike on Palafox, but Palafox makes sure he walks as far down as he can while heading back to the turret to avoid that. Then going in, locking down the enemy support again. They try to turn it back on Berserker, but they won't find him. It's Ignar dropping first. FBI needs one more honor to kill off the C980 carry, but he won't find it. He has to fall. The feather pull! The feather pull ends up taking him down from the grave. It's a double kill for Berserker. Berserker. Nicely done. Berserker goes into that brush and doesn't attack him. So he loses vision that forces FBI to flash in and it also critically bought him time. He was able to sidestep that boomerang blade and then get the cooldown back on his E because he had used that earlier one already. This is really nicely done here from Zven. Goes in. The root caller there, you know, the feather caller, excuse me, pulling back to get that initial root. Then Zven has the passive root from the auto and then the hook following it up. And then this is just really well played by Berserker. Goes into the brush so he loses vision. He has to guess on the boomerang blade. That is sidestep when it does doesn't get him, he has to flash in, but it bought him time for the E to come back up. Frustrating there for FBI. Does end up going down, and the kills both going towards Berserker. Really, really problematic here for NRG, who are you know, up against it. They've got to win three straight if they want to take this series. And now Berserker has three kills at seven minutes. Yeah, the frustration on Ignar's face earlier, the frustration on FBI right there after the reaction. These guys got to hang on. They got to stop this down here in bottom lane. As we're going to okay, take another look, this was the replay this while we were looking at during the, the replay. replay. Yeah. I assume, yeah. Okay. okay. So it's just Blabber losing the flash there. We'll see if that ends up costing them a whole lot. Obviously, you don't want to get those away for free, especially not with level six coming up soon. Yeah. We know how impactful those rel flash engages can be, but Blabber will not have that available immediately down in bottom Lane level six for Berserker means they're feeling confident to push forward and keep controlling the lane. As Doklas still got control over the top side here, forcing Fudge low. Fudge only has one third HP left and he does not have his teleport to return to lane. So that TP is going to complete and he'll have to walk it all the way back. Loses a couple creeps here to the turret as Dokla takes the first plate. He'll probably lose a full wave though because it's not a cannon wave, uh, which you really want to base on if you can help it because that is so durable. We'll tank it up. I'm assuming he's going to lose this entire wave, which definitely sucks. So he lost the two melees or so from the previous wave, loses this full wave. Uh, so will be, you know, pretty significant deficit there. It's already the kill to Doklo's favor, and now he's going to be able to establish you know, an even bigger CS lead. Uh, so, you know, really opening up quite a big advantage. 17 CS advantage plus that earlier kill. All right, he got, got one. one. He Maybe got a liar. One of six. Let's see. <laughs> It's something. Not Take ideal, it all back. but C9 is going in after the Herald now. Contract's trying to stop him here with Daisy. Gets the knock up onto Blabber. Fudge going into the brush is completely unafraid of the Ivern. C9 going for the objective as Ignar swoops in. Doka's got the kill on Fudge, and now Energy's going to grab a second. Yes, they may have Full. lost the objective, but a double kill back over onto Dokla feels like a decent trade. Yeah, absolutely. Dokla is going to be such a problem now for Cloud9, really getting accelerated. They try to take that fight. Fudge was always going to be going down. Blabber had no flash from earlier. Maybe he could have flashed and W'd over the wall if he actually had that, so that's a bit of a cost from that earlier replay we did see. At the end of the day, yeah, sure, they got Harold, but this is now a three-kill Renekton. How much can they push the pace of the game? That is going to be the question because it really does become a tale of two lanes for energy. They're trying to snowball through top. And the question I have is, does Dokla think the best path to victory is actually playing for the 1v1, trying to take towers, trying to get a risk as rich as possible, or does he think it's best to actually take his lead, go down towards bot side, help his team get dragons, help his team elsewhere on the map, and try to get the Sivir and the Azir ahead? I feel like it would have to be that second one, right? Like, you're drafting around this scaling, you're going up against a Jax that no matter how far ahead you are, eventually he becomes three-item Jax, and you're just not going to be bullying him the way you want to anymore. But the pressure being on Dokla specifically, I think, is important because as a player, I think Dokla's had 
more struggles than the rest of his team throughout their playoff victories so far. I think. The whole split, I would say. Yeah, he's been having a bit of a rough time. And now that he's the one that these resources are on, now that he's the one who has the opportunity to really step up, energy needs him to do that. Absolutely. And this is one of those things is, you know, Dokla in last split is Ignar could be potentially in some trouble. Flavor's coming down. They have the Herald, so... They, are, at the very least, are going to get most of the plates. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to get all, but they're going to get most of the plates, and then they're going to be able to use this to potentially start up that dragon here. Yep. Uh, so some more gold in the pockets of Berserker. But yeah, back to the Doko point. In spring, he had a lot of these pop-up games. Yes, he would have some down games, but he was kind of a high-risk, high-reward player. He had a lot of these really incredible pop-off carry games. In summer, it hasn't really happened as Blabber's going to look for an engage. Yeah, Blabber goes in for a 2 2 but there's the package. m s with a delivery, and Contracts is cleaned up. Now it's Blabber who's got to be a little bit careful as Palafox follows up with a DPS. m s flashing back over the wall, but Doak was ready to follow here for the Rampage. FBI chasing down the Cloud9 jungler. Needs a little bit more damage, and the last auto attack finds it. Energy may have lost their jungler, but they bring two back to win the fight. Question asked, question answered. Dokla TPs down towards bot side to join that fight. Gets another kill here. Trade flash with MNS, kills him off, helps them to win that. And getting another kill for FBI as well. There will be a cost on top side as Fudge is able to grab a plate and partial plate on the next one. But just look at that advantage up in top side. About 1,800 gold in the lead is Dokla. And this could be one of those games. This guy is such a confidence player that really builds him up to play better in the rest of the series, to try to take over, to try to dominate. We saw Cloud9 looking for the engage. There was no TP to match from Fudge, and there was a wave at his turret, so he couldn't actually move. He didn't have eyes on where Dokla was, couldn't get there to stop the TP. And as soon as Dokla arrives, he's big man on campus. There's no one that can actually match him at this point in the game. So he gets the kill on MNS. That frees up FBI to get an easy chase down for another kill. He's able to pay it forward. That advantage that Contracts helped him to build on that top side has now been brought across the map. And now Energy using their momentum here to take out this Drake. It's the first one of the game. Very, very late first Drake. Laver's coming up to try to challenge for it, but Contracts has the smite in time. 12 minutes in before a Drake is taken. It was Chem Drake, which is usually pretty low priority for a lot of teams. But the gold is dead even between these two squads. The massive advantage for Dokla being offset by the massive advantage for Berserker mm -hmm. on the other side of the map. He's already got that Kraken Slayer completed. You can see the Leandry's done for Palafox back in the mid lane, making sure he's going for the aggressive high damage option in the Mythic. Doesn't want to go for the Crown of the Shattered Queen in a game like this where you're up against Corky who will constantly yeah. poke it off with the Rockets. Yeah, Corky is just going to make uh, Crown pretty worthless. There's so many ways for that to get poked off. Even the feathers from Zaya. Q is yeah. relatively long range. Like, it's just not good if it's going to be able to get poked off. So he's going for the higher DPS build. Uh, we'll see if he is worried about potential engages, if he wants to go towards Zonia. Zonia's going to be a great option when you're playing against Nautilus just because it's so easy to reactively, you know, immune the ulti coming oh, through. Yeah. If that is going to be a concern. Obviously, there's Spell Shield there to answer from FBI if he still has that off cooldown. Um, but MNS, early Hex Drinker. This was kind of the, the meta on Corky, you know, back, back when we were seeing a lot of Corky, was people would just go, you know, tier, they go Hex Drinker, they go this to basically just get themselves through the lane in an AP matchup, yeah. and then just sit on the Hex Drinker, build up towards that Muramana, and then really start trying to grab the Mythic, you know, grab all the damage items, and not really go for anything more survival. And the important thing about that is it feels really good once you get to the point where everything is online with the Muramana fully evolved, once you get the Mythic, once you're at, like, that two-item spike, it all feels good. It just takes longer to really start going. You're stuck with a garage sale for a longer amount of yeah. time. You're still stacking this thing towards its evolution. You are just sitting on the half component there of the Hex Drinker, so I think that should hopefully influence which fights m &S wants to be a part of compared to the presence that Palafox is going to have that I think is going to be significantly larger. I'm also going to be really interested to see what mythic he does go with. Uh, I know as far as solo queue is, con is concerned, Luden's is actually slightly more popular than Triforce. I tend to think Triforce is better, but there are also other options. I see some people go IE, you can go Quick Blade, so there, there are a few different choices. Uh, will be interesting to see where he wants to go. Of course, Zai obviously bring a lot of physical damage. Jax is somewhat mixed, so maybe... Oh! Blabber looking for Q Flash, not going to be able to find it. And every time I see this, I'm just wondering, it's like, is it the Rail Bug? Yeah, I'm or not did they quite mess sure. Up? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. It looked Because it looked like he was aiming it kind of strange. There. It's, it's hard to tell, right? And if you guys don't know, the Rail Bug, basically, there, there was an issue where when you're Q flashing, it sometimes doesn't follow where your cursor is, and it can go off to the side. And since we say, see a lot of Rail these days, I'm always hesitant to criticize a Q flash that misses because I'm not sure if it's the bug or I'm not sure if it's yeah. a, a mistake, right? Uh, so it does always come out like, ah, I don't want to... I don't want to... Flame. 
in this situation. <laughs> I don't want to unnecessarily burn somebody down. Unfair. We do, however, have that top lane turret going down as energy forced it, and then now they can rotate themselves down into the river, take that second Rift Herald, try to use that to even up some of this gold lead. Cloud9 has been up around 1,000, 1 thousand here for the past couple of minutes just because of what they've been able to do, forcing the Tier 1 turret down in the bottom lane. The CS advantage in that bot lane role also still maintaining its prominence as FBI and Ignar at least didn't bleed out any more kills, but the lead built for Berserker and Zvan has remained. Yeah, it has remained, but at the very least, FBI was able to pick up a couple kills himself, so that was yeah. really critical. You know, the Duke was able to get down there, help him get one kill, he got the other in another fight, so he has been able to pick up uh, some pretty good amounts of gold himself. It is kind of crazy, though, that, you know, at 134 CS, yes, he's a little bit behind 10 CS per minute, but he has two kills as well. He's almost 2k down on where Berserker is, all right? Berserker yeah. is ridiculously fed because he got so much gold from the plates. He got all three of the kills, including the first blood, and his farm is coming in really, really quickly. Uh, the number one farmer right now in the game by quite a bit, so... Berserker has definitely gotten paid. He's going to have his quick blades done here pretty soon. He also went cull first, which helps accelerate that even more. And we're going to see him on this two-item spike very, very quickly. And then Berserker is going to be such a problem, right? Because normally yep. you want to talk about, okay, Renekton flanks from the back line. You know, try to get in on these carries. Well, he, it's a cleanse side. It's very, very difficult to actually deal with this guy. As long as there's any sort of help for him, you know, any sort of peel, he's going to be really, really tough to take down. And that's where you start to really rely on some of these other carries to be able to get that work done, right? To get Palafox and FBI involved, where they can be that consistent damage. FBI just gets stunned up by Fudge, loses half HP, pops his own ulti. Got to be careful about those feathers from Berserker as a follow-up there, too. And yet, in a game where you have Azir, and you have Sivir, and you have all this massive scaling, I still think Berserker is going to be the most important person on the map just mm. because of the way the early game has gone, and because of the way that Cloud9 wins and loses both fights and games as a whole. Remember back in game number two, the one time it was looking good for energy in that one was where Berserker got a little bit too greedy. He got caught on his way to the fight, mm -hmm. and then energy was able to win. I think if Berserker and all of Cloud9 playing around him are playing a smart game, it's very difficult for energy to win. Absolutely, especially when he's on a champ with has more individual agency, right? You know, Zaya can make her own plays. Zaya can defend herself in these fights, and I think that is where we've really seen Berserker excel. The wave cleared out on top side, but they're trying to actually pull down this turret regardless. Not going to be able to do it. We're trying to use Daisy to just tank that up, allow Palafox to finish it off, but with backdoor coming into play, not going to be able to actually do so. With the Amp Tome in pocket for MS, I am now expecting that it is actually going to be that Luden's build, and they're looking for a pick on bot side. Yeah, they want Dokla. They're dropping the Magnet That's Storm, so he down. answers with the Dominus. He's trying to put some of the damage back into Blabber, maybe fight this off a little bit. Berserker's going to be rotated down here, too, because they want to give the shutdown money over to the Zaya. Dokla with the flash out. Sven doesn't hit him with the dredge line. Dokla's still on the run. Palafox swoops in from the side. Sanchez is killed off. Dokla just outplayed him. And energy's played him. Everybody on C9 drops dead. And a teleport coming in from him and has to maybe find Palafox. But he just barely gets it with a burn. Ignar chasing him back over the wall here as Big Dokes wants to cut off the escape route. Contracts and Ignar don't have a whole lot of DPS. But there's not a whole lot of HP left. Jimenez tries to turn it back around. It's an ace for energy. What a play from Dokla, able to survive in what was a 1v3, 1v2 for a long time here. He's big man on campus. He has a 450 gold shutdown, needs to survive from this situation. You can see on the minimap, everyone from his team was just hoofing it down towards bot side. The TP is coming in through bot lane as well, so he knows he just needs to delay. Buys time, the spells come back up, slice and dice, flashes in, sidesteps the hook there from Zven, and then Palafox has arrived, shifts in, flashes forward, drops the ulti, creating space. They're able to knock down the carries here from Cloud9, the kill off Berserker. Yes, MNS arrives, he's able to get one back but so critical actually to protect that shutdown, the 450 gold shutdown from Dokla, if that went over to Berserker, if that went over to Fudge, it would have been such a big deal, but it does not. And NRG now really starting to take control in this game, the lead now over 1K. They've gotta be feeling so good about that fight. 
and Dokla in particular. We said he's got to step up. We said he had looked shaky in summer, and now he's the one charged with getting him across the finish line in a must-win game in this series. That was absolutely massive from him on an individual level. Absolutely. You know, I said it earlier. I'll say it again. He's such a confidence player. When things are working for Dokla, he can absolutely take over a game. He can take over a series, and that is what Cloud9 will have to deal with now. As we see, 20-minute bear, and they're just starting up. Cloud9 are going to be aware of it here pretty shortly, I think, if they aren't already out. Blue Trinket now into the pit. They see it going on. No way they commit to this, I don't think, but... It's starting to get pretty low, and I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Yeah, energy really going in for that as Ignar finds an engage on Berserker, but nobody else is ready to follow up just yet. Now, Dokla's got to be careful because he's a little bit overextended past the rest of his team. Baron's still at 3K. Are they going to trust Contracts to flip this Baron? Blabber is right on the very back of the pit. Palafox goes over the wall to shove Blabber back. They secure it. Energy take a 20-minute Baron. Oh, man, they don't flip it. They rig the game. Balabox goes over the wall, help to secure it, shuffles back Blabber, denying any chance at a steal. Beautifully done there by Energy. It's a really bold play. They're only up 1K, and they did the Baron at 20 minutes in the face of Cloud9 with all five members there, but they're able to make it happen really calm, cool, and collected there from NRG, and now they have the ability to try to extend this lead, to try to really start to snowball this one forward. I love the fact that they went for it because in a game like this, when the previous game was such a stomp, when it seems like the first two you just got outclassed, you got to do something ballsy in the third one. You can't just sit there and be like, well, we'll scale forward and maybe at four items, we'll see what happens. No, you're not going to win those. I love the fact that they're ready to commit to these plays, that they're trusting themselves to do it right as a team. Absolutely. You know, and I'm down for risky plays as long as the risk is weighted in your favor. It's exactly. appropriate the situation. If that had been just a full-on smite flip against Flavor, I would not have yeah. been too down for it. Yeah, no burger flip. But, but the fact that you had Palafox Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that they were willing to start it up at 20 minutes, they have Ivern. You know, so it is actually a really healthy Baron take there. Ivern with the shields, with Daisy helping the tank, is going to make it. So it's pretty low risk and incredibly high reward there. Energy are able to execute, and now that 1.3k gold lead has become a 3,500 gold lead here. It is going to be a cloud soul here, so probably not what either team was really hoping for, but still, again, a lot of tools here on Energy's side, especially if they can actually get that, that it's going to be really good for. Sivir, Rakan, Renekton, all really like this ultimate, uh, it, this soul, excuse me. Exactly. The quickness, the Dominus making it so you can chase guys down after you initially dive in with the slice and dice in case they try to kite you out with the flash. There's a lot of tools that can benefit from it as Berserker got hit there by the Ivern, but hey, he can still walk away from it. They weren't quite in range to go for any serious follow-up. Dokla's the split push threat in the bottom lane. They already took out the tier two up in top to give them this 4.1 thousand gold lead that you're looking at right now. But it is key. They got the cleanse, right? So he walks out, but without that cleanse available, if there is a fight, flash stun from Dokla becomes an opportunity. Flash engage from Ignar becomes an opportunity where if you can 100-0 Berserker, all of a sudden, it's really, really risky. So Cloud9 is going to have to play pretty far back here, play pretty conservative without that summoner, which is going to allow NRG to just take even more turrets off the map. I mean, if Berserker were to die here, it would be catastrophic. So NRG just continues to extend that gold lead. They're taking away jungle camps. They're securing vision around the dragon. So now Ivor can just walk back to it. Oh, Dokla getting jumped on by Zven and Blabber. Berserker, as Berserker and Palafox are in a 1v1 off to the side. Palafox chases him down! Palafox kills Berserker! Palafox gets his flash and the kill without expending his flash or ultimate there. Really nicely played. Felt confident to look for it, and now energy posturing to take even more. What was the word that you said it would be if Berserker dies here? Catastrophic? Catastrophic. It is indeed that for the side of C9, as now they are going to lose their tier OTP 2 in mid. Flank. Control of Double the Drake. Uh-oh, C9's ready to try to make some kind of a counterattack. Imanes goes for a package. FBI flashes over the wall. C9 trying to collapse on these guys, and Imanes has the shutdown on FBI. The catastrophe has arrived, but for what side? A shutdown on Dokla. C9 finds a massive angle, but now will they lose anybody in the back end? Not quite, as Fudge and Blabber got low, but nobody dropped. That was brutal from C9. The double DP there coming up massive for Cloud9. The solo laners find an angle. They had the package for Corky, and they make it happen with the Corky and the Jax coming in behind. They'll even be able to get the Dragon, which Energy couldn't actually finish. Do they go for this? I mean, this would be risky if they go over the wall. 
It's probably a one-way trip here because no one else is around, so they are going to wisely back off. Not worth risking it for a single Cloud Dragon from this point. So Cloud9 able to get something back there and grab an objective after it. Really good plays from MS and Pledge to bail them out of what was looking like a pretty bad situation after that death from Berserker. Yeah, we definitely jinxed it with the catastrophe comment there because it was Cloud9 <laughs> bringing the ambulance, chaos, but not for me. <laughs> exactly that, man. You can see energy just scatter as FBI Great immediately package. had to flash over the wall. I mean, that was really well placed. He bumped FBI back and made it so there was no retreat through the package. FBI flashes over the wall. It's the only angle he can go, but you still have that second W to be able to go in. The core he got oh, not only the kill on the Sivir, but also the 850 gold shutdown off of Dokla. Dude. So we go back to live. He's on three items. He's almost the richest man in the game out of nowhere now. He's richer than Berserker is. Mm -hmm. He's, he had plus 300 over Berserker as Dokla's going for a teleport to join up with the rest of his team. He's found the cutoff point. MS Valks over the wall. Dokla had an angle, but Whoa. the rest of the team wasn't there quickly enough. So he thought he may just get bursted down instead. He had to leave. Yeah, Cloud9. They are not waiting for them to set up the flank. They see it coming in. Zven flashes the wall and looks for the hook. He's trying to just collapse on Dokla and burst him down. There was no TP to answer from Fudge, so Fudge is still just pushing down through bot side. Dokla will be back here. You know, does still have an advantage in that 1v1, absolutely. Has that full item over what Fudge is at, but MNS is only 200 gold behind Dokla. Berserker is a real threat. They're both on three items. You also have the stopwatch, you have the Maw. So MNS is going to be really tricky to actually burst down. He did go for the Luden's build, so more towards the poke. And he's almost level 16. So with that rank 3 ultimate, Corky's poke becomes very, very deadly. Early on in the game, it tickles you. Later in the game, you get hit by a big one. That can be a, a massive portion of your health, especially for someone like Palafox. And he's gone for the Banshees here to try to answer. But once that gets poked off, one or two more rockets hit, you can't fight all of a sudden. Yeah, that's the problem with it, man. It's a similar issue to what we were talking about earlier, why you choose not to go crown in a matchup like this. It's just so easy with the amount of projectiles. Oh, no. Ignar wanted to go in, but he didn't find Berserker or anything, really. Daisy's about to drop for free as Cloud9 wants to disengage. Palafox doesn't full commit an ulti into this. Dokla's still looking. Maybe he needs to go into the pit. A nice root collar on Blabber. Magnet Storm ain't gonna be enough, but now Dokla's stuck up in the front of the fight. The Sterics won't keep him alive, and Ignar has to retreat. It'll be a one for one when it's all said and done, but C9 still has to try to get themselves back out of this one. Energy's starting up the Baron again. The Ignar's poke? gotta be careful. He's at one quarter HP, and MNS still has a lot of ammo. Contract and Palafox both get chunked, and MNS quickly makes them rethink their decisions. Yeah, great pick onto Blabber, which could have meant more, but oh, they're going for the engage! They're not done! Palafox finds a swoop, but it's only onto Sven. Now MNS stuck inside the stasis. Can they find anything more? Not Fudge! yet. Berserker with MNS off to the side as Fudge makes his entrance, but he won't get a kill just yet. Berserker up into the sky. The feathers fly. Fudge trying to chase after FBI. He finds another! Ignor is down! And C9, with three blinking health bars, wins the fight! What a scrappy game between these two teams! Contracts to Vecu, and I don't think he meant to do that! Contracts. And now he's gone! He falls to Berserker and loses even more tempo for energy. It's C9 stepping up when they need to. The gold lead is gone. Energy has fumbled the ball. That is massive. It looked like he took that root caller onto a minion. I think he accidentally clicked on the minion, jumped forward there into the waiting arms of Berserker, who's able to burst him down. And what a crazy exchange. Back and forth, back and forth. Energy at the beginning of it, we're the ones to actually pick off Blabber, but Cloud9 kited back into the tri brush so well, creating this zone of control where you just can't walk into it. You'd be walking into the meat grinder here. So this is way earlier on. This initial pick here onto Blabber that they will get was great. Energy are piling forward. But it's all about the angle here from Cloud9. You cannot walk in past this line. If you walk in, you're walking into just all of the feathers on the ground. You're walking into MNS just poking you. So energy can't go forward. They have to retreat. And then Sven and MNS looking to actually go on the scouting mission, trying to catch some recalls. But it's Palafox who catches them off. And then Fudge coming in from the side, pops the counter strike, flashes forward, leap strikes in. Berserker is there to follow. Both of them going in, and Fudge having so much CDR at this point gets the second leap strike. And then I want to see, was it yet? That has to be an accident. I think just a misclick. He queues over to try to clear up that wave. Accidental click, I'm assuming, was probably supposed to be a move command instead of actually click to that minion. Goes forward, ends up going down.
And you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's like, what? <laughs> what are they doing? Audience reactions are similar to coach cams, <laughs> similar to everything. People just losing their minds at the way some of these plays end up going. That's and what you binds know, us all together as League of Legends players. We've all felt that before. Wondering what your teammates are doing. <laughs> In a game you were winning, and now you're staring down the barrel of another Cloud9 lead. It's plus 3K and a Baron buff for another 90 seconds. Here, 30 minutes into the game. Energy are are in defensive posture. They still have Sivir, they still have Azir, they still have Scaling, but they have lost all of their momentum. The Crocodile that was running the game is no longer doing so. Imanaz with a package delivery over the wall immediately bounced right back out. FBI stood on the burn and nearly died 100 to zero. Yeah, that is a ridiculous amount of damage from the package. And there's a GA and a Maw on MNS. So he is built very defensively. He's going to be so tough to actually take down and is still putting out that much damage. There's also a Maw now on Berserker plus the BT. The C9 members are getting really tough to deal with, and Dokla may have gotten them to the late game, but now it's time for Palafox and FBI to step up. You know, Palafox has had a couple good plays, but these are the guys who have to get them across the finish line if they're going to get there, because they are really starting to fall behind in gold. And Dokla's time in this game is really kind of over as far as his domination. Fudge is caught up. He's on three items. The slight gold lead doesn't matter anymore. Fudge was also level 17 before Dokla was. He's not just caught up in items. He's caught up in experience. His champion scales better in general. The time of the croc has ended. It's time for the rest of the team to show us what they've got. Three and a half items on the Sivir and the Azir. Ignar on the Rakan. Remember, before that Baron play, he's the one who went for an engage and didn't find the targets he was looking for with that quickness. He needs to be accurate with these. I mean, Ignar, I think, has not been having his best series. When you think back to the last game, I don't think some of his engages on Rel were really what he was hoping they were going to be. You have got to be perfect from this spot now. You've got to look for the reverse sweep, and they may have caught Sven. Well, Sven can get away with the flash. Yes, he has to use that. He wishes he can keep it, but hey, C9 is happy to not allow energy to make any picks. Now, Blabber coming around from the side. Dokla and Ignar could both be in trouble. A shattering strike over the wall, but nobody else is close enough to make it mean anything. Berserker's already got the wave coming up down the top lane here, and that means they can just immediately force down this tier two. He's not Ziggs or Tristana, but he's the next closest thing. The turret just melts while Palafox tried to use the soldiers back in mid, but the ulti goes to waste as Fudge just walks away from it. Did have to use the flash. Yeah, force that flash out. So that is big at the very least. Will help to defend his back line from Fudge. But Fudge also building towards the Zonius. He has a stopwatch. He got a GA on MNS. You got that Maw on Berserker as well MNS. And you have a stopwatch on Fudge. So it's going to be very difficult to deal with these Cloud9 carries. And both of the lower Econ members of C9 in Blabber and Zven have decided to put their economies towards those carries as well. It's mm -hmm. double Knight's Val for what I'm assuming is MNS and Berserker one for one, yes, one sir. for the other. So both of them are also going to have that extra buff. C9 is putting all this gold, all of this power into making sure these carries do not die. But something good happening for uh, NRG. Four items now for Palafox. Uh, could be working towards that death cap la last item, but that is obviously very, very far off. And Cloud9 are three minutes away from potential soul here. I think that is likely where energy will have to kind of draw a line in the sand, look to try to contest. They could give it up if they want, but they really, I think, are going to have a tough time playing out this game if they do. And for energy, I'm looking at the inventories. The Sivir sitting on three items plus BF Sword. She really wants to have that fourth completed item by the time that Drake fight begins. Fudge tries to run away. Dokla wants to keep him no locked flash. down. They're going to start this off the right way. Fudge with the stopwatch at least buys enough time to stay alive, but now he's charmed up. Ignar's locked them down. Dokla shut him down. That's one pick for energy, but they still want to find some more. MS with the poke, holding them at bay. C9 regrouping, keeping everybody else alive. Energy, the problem with that pick is it can't lead to anything else. They don't have enough control over the rift. There's no neutral objectives for them to take, but at least they got some money and a shutdown on the fudge. Yep, they get that kill, so that's going to be a slight victory, but as you say, nothing massive. At the very least, they only spent ultimates. They did not spend flashes because I think oh, it can no. go against you, but MNS is going to get aggressive here. MNS is already in the middle of everything, forcing the flash out of FBI again. C9 are trying to make their move. Zvan escapes off to the side with a little bit of a Spider-Man play with a dredge line. They're not going to lose anybody, but they're not going to find any of their targets either. This is the second time this game where C9 has had one of their players picked, and then they use the opportunity to go super aggressive when energy doesn't expect it. Well, the TP is coming in. Cloud9 want to go towards this Baron potentially here. I mean, that's just TPing back from base. They're trying to set up in that upper area. Fudge is now alive, has his TP as well. Sven is sitting pretty low. Energy are going to try to control mid lane before they move over there. 
They do have pretty much all their summoners except for FBI's, but FBI could be very vulnerable, and that Baron is going down fast. It is melting so quickly. MS is just keeping energy away. The Baron is already dropped. It is secured by C9. A TP is coming in from Fudge, and he is ready to team fight. Ignar goes in for the grand entrance, but the timing isn't there, and Fudge just disengages. Blabber's got to be careful. Flash forward into the Magnet Storm to lock these guys down, but it won't work. FBI turns on him with an EPS. Daisy with a knockup on Berserker as the Boomerang Blade flies out again. C9 trying to escape with their Baron. And Ignar tries to lock down the enemy AD carry, but the cleanse gets Berserker away. FBI kills Ven. Dope goes into the stasis, keeping everybody else zoned. Energy, five-man group in the mid lane, chasing C9 out. They go They're mid. pushing. They might just try to end the game. Ignar's looking to stop backs. He escapes, and C9 is still not back in their own base. Palafox is doing the same. The soldier jumps forward, and Fudge has to try to run. Energy still pushing down the mid lane. They'll take out the two. Oh, he's going to go further. Palafox trying to fight Berserker and Fudge needs a little bit more damage and he finds the first. He goes for the second but a flash out from Berserker. MS coming back from the wall needs a little bit more damage on Palafox and he'll kill him. Dope and contracts and FBI now still trying to stay in and fight as MS and Berserker step forward in a 2v3. Contract tries to give him the shields. Berserker has nothing left. MS will lose his guardian angel. But what about the last little bit of the fight here? Dope and contract still looking to burn him down. The extra bit of the shield, the slow, the burst, the damage. Yep, Croc! Dokla still getting it done. Dokla, the retirement director, may pass, but this man refusing to go extinct. Dokla is going crazy in this game as NRG march on that mid lane inhibitor. There's no carry for Cloud9 for so long. There's potential to still end the game. We'll see if they want to make the risky play and go for it. They're posturing for it. They're clearing out multiple waves here from mid and bot, getting everything moving in their direction. They still have the Sivir, they want to end the game. It's seven seconds left on Fudge. FBI, he took turret aggro! They shut him down! The push is done. They won't be able to end the game right now. Zven tries to lock down Dokla for a little Fudge bit more. Back. But now they gotta be careful. Fudge is back on the map. The counter strike is ready, but Dokla flashes away. FBI taking turret aggro there. Ends up being a critical blunder for energy. Fudge won't chase it any further. The Drake is alive. Palafox is clearing waves. Back in the base of energy. I want to see what happened there. Did he actually activate the ricochet for the auto reset on the turret? That's my guess is that was what he did is he used the W for the auto reset, accidentally picked up aggro, and they just hard engage instantly off that. So I'm so curious to see that replay because I think that could have been a game ender there for energy, but FBI picking up turret aggro is so bad for them. Not only does he die, that means they lose soul. They lose full control of the map here. We got to see it one more time. I want to watch closely, see if it was a ricochet that, how does he pick up aggro? Okay, so it's it's on Daisy right now. I think it had, I can't, honestly, I can't really see. I couldn't tell because the shield didn't get broken on Blabber. So did he actually have a ricochet or was it just an initial auto on Blabber as he was walking up? I'm not sure. That would have to be watched like slowed down and zoomed in honestly, or maybe I would have to see it from his POV so I could see if the W got activated. But either way, picks up the turret aggro. Blabber goes in on the engage. Sven is there to follow. They instantly kill off FBI, and now Cloud9 out on the map here. Both their carries, full items here. And you can see the zone is completed for Fudge as well. So it's definitely prime time for the Corky and the Zaya, but also Deathcap on the way for Palafox. He still needs a lot of gold, but he has five and a half. FBI sitting on five and a half items as well. So they have the gold to make it happen. It's just, can you get that fight executed? Exactly. I don't think this is a game where the next fight is going to be decided by the gold so much as who gets it right. They need to have the proper engage if they want to have a chance of keeping this series going for energy. Ignar getting the lockdowns, hitting that quickness on valuable targets. MS no longer has Guardian Angel. That's a very important one. MS is now a much more viable target to go for a hard engage on and try to find that pick. There's no stopwatch on him either. Daisy still leading the charge for energy as they have the Sun Disc to make sure that Cloud9 can't try to set anything up on him. Dokla's back in the base. He has no flash, but he does have his unleashed teleport. Palafox off to the side here, but there is a ward placed down by C9 that'll see him if he tries to enter into the mid lane. Oh, that hook was so close to catching FBI from the brush. That is really dangerous. When Cloud9 took control over those Ivern brushes, you've got to be so careful. Uh, this is really tense now. NRG, their upper bracket lives are on the line. They don't want to fall to the lower bracket. They want to be heading into the grand finals. And a win here would guarantee top two for them in the LCS. Would move them on to Sunday where they would play against you know, whoever comes through that lower bracket. Cloud9, though, only one game away from punching their ticket to Sunday to trying to three-peat here. 
trying to become only the third team in LCS history to do so. And I think it's also really interesting when you compare the difference in experience for a situation like this. When we go back to when we had this been on the desk and he talks about just the expectation of C9 to make these big moments. They've been in so many of these big moments, they know what the pressure feels like. Over on Energy, it was only just this split where they were able to stay in the upper bracket and continue yep. finding wins there. So that pressure is untested on them to the same degree. I really want to see if these guys can clutch it out and perform in this late game scenario. Absolutely, and that's what they're going to have to do. You know, not only this game, but a couple more if they actually want to win the series. Energy has had a lot of close moments, but Cloud9 was lurking. I wasn't sure exactly who was in the brush, but someone is below them. Uh, it is Fudge playing from that bottom side who is threatening the flank. Energy, if you play slow, you're going to get poked out eventually by this Corky. It can be pretty risky. Cloud9 are trying to just dominate that top side river. They want first move towards that Baron. Daisy is summoned, but it can be killed off quick. It's 14 seconds till Baron spawns. Daisy's still got about 3,000 HP. Everybody on C9 visible to energy, but man, the rockets, the rockets so tear through these health bars. It is so difficult for energy to approach the Cloud9 lines. C9 falling back into their own jungle now as energy moves up into the top side river looking for control. MS is back in base. I assume with package at the ready. Yep, there it is. He'll be able to make his TP and C9 starting up the Baron. They can burn it down incredibly quickly, even with only two. Them. MS is behind. He wants the angle here for the package delivery. Dopla's already in the Dominus. Energy falling back as MS goes over the wall. Package is delivered. They've immediately got their first kill. But Cloud9 are taking a lot of AoE. Double kill back up into Berserker. He's going forward with the feathers. He'll let him fly. Palafox is done. Dopla will not be able to find a return kill into the Cloud9 Marksman. And with MS Valking over the wall, I think C9 just got it. They'll need to kill Dokwa through the resurrection, but it's not a problem. Fudge gets the last auto to take him down, and now there's no way out for Contract. He's stuck in a 1v2, and they'll be able to burn him down too. It's Fudge split pushing in bottom. Contracts is done. Ace for C9, and that'll be your series. Sign seal delivered. MS gets into the back line with the package, roasting up energy before Berserker goes crazy, flying in to secure the team by win. It was the closest game of the series for Energy. They made it take 42 minutes, but C9 is the superior team. They will take out Energy 3-0 and punch their ticket and earn their spot in the finals next Sunday. Cloud9 remaining undefeated as well in the playoffs. They've had some really close calls, but at the end of the day, 3-0, 3-0, Blabber called it. He said they're not dropping a game in playoffs in their interview after the first series. We'll see if they can make good on that come next Sunday. But for now, we know they are guaranteed top two. They will have a chance to defend their title, to fight for the three-peat. Only third team in LCS to ever do it if they're able to accomplish it. And man, I flash.